When we talk about extending and automating the enterprise, I want to go through a few scenarios. We'll start off with deployment automation. If you're building out your GIS infrastructure, what are the different techniques that you could use? The first one that we have is you can build it out and all in one system using Enterprise Builder. You're probably familiar with that. What we have new is a command line interface to it. And that means you can script the entire system to be built out on one machine. But if you're building a large system, a multi-node deployment, whether it be on premises or in the cloud, you have choices. You can use Chef PowerShell DSC as ways to automate, or you can use enterprise builders for the cloud, which we call Cloud Builder, or cloud formation templates, or the CLI versions of these. You can build out such a system on AWS and on Azure. And of course, if you're expanding it, trying to build out your GIS infrastructure to be a geospatial cloud, fully interconnected, distributed, networked, and trusted to achieve the goals that you want, building GIS systems that come together, you can use the ArcGIS API for Python. So this is the whole set of automation that we have if you're trying to do deployment automation. But today, what we're going to show you is three ways that you can add value to your enterprise. The first one is by extending, extending using the enterprise SDK. You can build interceptors or extensions to the server object that you get out of the box. Or you can also write your own custom business logic and drop it inside of a geoprocessing tool, also known as a web tool. Instantly, you get a web service out of it, and all our clients know how to intercept uh, or how to invoke calls, uh, make calls into a geoprocessing tool and get the job done. So that is another option. Then, of course, what we are glad to introduce today is webhooks as a new way to integrate into external systems. And of course, there are various ways of automating your workflows, either through the Python API or through webhooks, depending on what you're trying to do. You're all familiar with the server object. On a map or image server, you send the request, you get the responses. But if you had to build interceptors, it's really adding functional logic preserving the interfaces, and then you can add a security or a functional SOI. You, you can add an auditing SOI, and you can chain them together. You get an opportunity to intercept the requests and the responses. So at the end of it, you're building something that is of true value, where all the clients just continue to work. To show us what it's like, I'd like to introduce Shriyas. Thank you, Jay. HIPAA regulations require that all healthcare systems securely store patient data, that that's accessible only to authorized users, and record absolutely everything. So most healthcare systems use some sort of an electronic medical record system to store and record their patient data. In my scenario, I'm using tables in a database to represent my EMR. I have patient and provider information with medical history and audit logs. You can see that in the audit logs table that the records are fine-grained. When a provider accessed a particular patient information gets logged with an access time. I'm a GIS analyst with the healthcare system. And my organization has an ArcGIS enterprise deployed that copies a portion of the patient data within the GIS for mapping and analytics. So as a GIS analyst, I have access to the patients and the hospital's layer in my enterprise. And using that data, I've created drive time polygons to understand the coverage of hospitals in my network. The blue points here represent the patient data. Let me access one of them. And you can see that I have access to the patient ID attribute. So the patient ID attribute so most healthcare systems maintain their rich, comprehensive patient data in the EMR and not within the GIS. Besides, as a GIS analyst, I'm not accessible to authorize to access more information, more attributes. This is OK for a GIS analyst, but if I were a healthcare provider respons responsible for patient care, this wouldn't be sufficient. Let's take a look at the logs that are getting generated on the server when this information is accessed. So I'm logging into Server Manager, and I'm going to query the information. You can see that there are records in the server logs that 
Let's say, as a GIS analyst, I have access to patient and hospital service. But this is not adequate for compliance reasons. So we really have to overcome two challenges. We need fine-grained logs, and we need to make information available from our, within, from our EMR into our GIS. This is where extending services using the server object interceptor pattern can help. The developers in my organization have implemented this pattern and provided me with an application zip file containing code and configurations. As an administrator of an ArcGIS server, I can log into the server manager and upload the extension. You can see that I have a couple extensions already uploaded. Once uploaded, I can then activate this interceptor on my patients and hospitals service. You can see that the user experience and system allows you to chain multiple interceptors together to create workflows that make sense to your organizations. And once the service is restarted, it's good to go. So let's get back to our enterprise, but this time I want to log in as a nurse administrator. So as a nurse administrator, I do have access to the same patient and hospital feature layers. And I can bring them into a map and access the same data. So the data is accessible. However, as a nurse administrator, as a healthcare provider, I do need to have access to richer information than what was available to the GIS analyst. So let's take a look at the attributes of patients this time around. So in addition to the patient ID, I can see other attributes, along with the next appointment, date, and location. Where is this information coming from? Well, it's our interceptor that's enriching our layers and bringing that information from the EMR to our feature layers. Another side effect of our interceptors is logging. Remember this log? I'm going to click the audit logs table one more time, and it's going to refresh. And you can see that as a nurse administrator accessed the various patient records, fine-grained logs got reported into my EMR database. So in this way, server object interceptors are great to intercept and log. Let me show you some code that makes it all possible. So using the Java Enterprise SDK, I have authored a class and annotated it as an interceptor. In the initialize method of the class, I'm creating a connection to my EMR database. And the crux of the implementation is within the handle rest request method. In particular, I want to enrich the query response before it goes back to the client. So in this method, I'm applying access control so that for GIS analysts, there is no enrichment. For all other roles, I'm inserting new fields and then populating their values from my EMR database. And lastly, I'm logging absolutely all access to the database and the patient record in my EMR database. So this way, SOIs not only help me to do fine-grained logging, but to enrich my information from integrating various sources. And the best part of all, I did not have to write any custom applications to make this all possible. 